Good morning, everyone. Today is turkey day. Today is the day turkeys should arrive in the mail. So I'm expecting a phone call from the post office here pretty soon. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some things ready in the brooder for this uh, batch of turkeys. And we're getting, we ordered 20 turkeys. That's because that's what Rebecca wanted to raise this year. So that's what we're gonna do. So today I ended up taking off work just because of this delivery. But I've got a bunch of other things, a bunch of chores, a bunch of errands to do today. And uh, I'm gonna try to maximize what I can get done today since I am burning a vacation day. So here in our livestock barn, we have one pen that's all fenced in that is specifically for brooding young birds. And then we have another pen that's all fenced in and this is where our adult chickens go. So I just need to get this brooder section ready for all these turkeys. And of course, it's still a little dirty from the last batch of chickens we had in here. Bad thing is you gotta have a little cart or a wheelbarrow to be able to clean out anything in this barn. <laughs> Got a cat fight. Always something going on. Will the gate shut? Yep. I love those two-way gate latches. But those last two that I bought, man, they don't work as well as the f first ones. I don't know, I think they're getting cheaper. Cheaper made. This is where a wheelbarrow would be better. Man, it is starting to stink over here. And it ain't the compost. It's the piggies. Boy, there's no good way to hold this thing. Oh, this thing is the worst contraption ever. Ugh. So in the past, I've always said our pigs don't stink. Running them, you know, like in the woods and everything. But right now they're still pinned up in this small pen and we haven't opened them up to the wooded pasture area yet. And we got four this year. The most we've raised in this tiny training pen and they are starting to stink. So we need to get them out in the woods here pretty soon. I'd say they're big enough. I'd say you're big enough to go out in the woods. So we set up the electric fence along this back corner to train the pigs up last weekend. It's not the best setup in the world. I just got some temporary posts, you know, and some temporary poly wire. And then I've just got a, this is pretty um, hodgepodge, I guess. Um, We've got this electric fence charger just hooked to a battery here just to just to be able to get them trained up so sometime this weekend we'll probably end up um, clearing out for their electric fence and get that all put around these trees you see here and around and give them a wooded area give them a lot bigger place to roam morning buddy how are you rebecca still hadn't named the steers yet she hadn't given you guys any names yeah, you're just all big boys, aren't you? Yeah, the steers are awfully big. This, oh, hold on, look at this big boy. Look him come over here. Hey, buddy, look at the how wide he is. Hopefully you can see that. You're a big boy. Yeah, these are all good looking steers. So uh, after I got the steers, I tried to get a butcher date and they're already like into next year, but they think they're kind of overbooked. Or they have a lot of people booked that will cancel because they're booked in multiple um, butchers to see which one they could get in first. So they really do think they can get me in in like October. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But right now I am on a waiting list for the steers to go to the butcher this fall. So we'll have to wait and see how that all works out. What is going on in here? As soon as I leave, you guys come in here to investigate. I'm gonna go ahead and make this brooder just a little bit smaller. Cut this room in half, this little piece of plywood. Put out some wood chips. All right, got a heat lamp. Heat 
heat lamp number two. Oh, the phone's ringing. Probably the post office. Yep, okay, I'll be up there in a minute. All right, All right we got our turkeys. We got them from the Meyer Hatchery. I believe they're over in Ohio. And uh, we'll open this up to see how many survived the trip. So we ordered a total of 20 turkeys and it said they sent 21. There they are. Yeah. And it appears that they are all alive. Aren't you? Yeah. So these are broad breasted white turkeys and they're pretty much exactly the same as what you buy in the grocery store. They get nice and big in about, uh, I don't know, about 16, 12 to 16 weeks, probably 16 weeks, somewhere in there. <laughs> they're wanting to get out. So all I'm gonna do is just dip their beaks in the water, make sure they get a drink, and then I'm gonna leave them right in front of the water. I know I have people argue with me and say, yeah, it's not necessary, you don't need to do that. Well, these ones that come in the mail have never drank before. If you bought them at the farm store, they're already trained probably. And turkeys are very fragile, especially the first couple weeks. So definitely wanna make sure they get hydrated. feeder there there you go and I'll put another feeder right there all right I think the baby turkeys are gonna be fine they're not bunching up they got food and water they'll be good so after I got the turkeys settled in I ended up running some errands and then that took about four hours and then I edited a video and the next thing you know it's already after six o'clock in the evening so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take the tractor. It's got the backhoe still on it. I'm gonna go see if I can dig out some of them stumps and uh, see if we, and the bad thing is, is they're not, they look like a bunch of small trees. They're all growing out of a larger stump. So when you see all those little small trees, the stump is probably the size of all those trees put together. So they, they may be like 12 inch diameter stumps. We'll just have to wait and see. They may, they, I guarantee they're not gonna be easy to get out. You're gonna see these little bitty trees, but the stump is just way bigger. Well, apparently I parked the tractor in the wrong spot. The birds have been pooping all over it. And it's not regular bird poop. It is like, it is like blackberries. The birds have been eating all the blackberries are like in season right now. And this is like blackberry bird poop all over the tractor. That is just, terrible i'm gonna have to end up washing this thing at least i got a towel i guess i can sit on so looking where this little cluster of trees was i think this right here i think that's a stump i do think these two are a stump but right there, these all, even that one, that fifth one, that all may be one stump. Even these over here could be connected. This is gonna be a mess. I think this one is gonna be the easiest one to get out. So I'm gonna try to dig around it first. <laughs> There's a root right there. I'm pulling the whole tractor. Well, I've dug about halfway around this stump and there's a bunch of smaller little trees mixed in here, just full of roots. I'm gonna reposition the tractor and see if I can start digging around this side more and then maybe dig around the other side more. I'm just gonna have to slowly work my way around this. stump right there I think. Oh, oh, I may have got it. All right. Ah, yes.
it out. Just keep digging deeper. Oh yeah, there we go. I think I gotta take the whole thing. Oh yeah, I'm kinda slowly moving it. So that took about an hour to dig those stumps out. That did take a little while, but there was just a bunch of little stumps all the way around it. Everything was just pure roots and we finally got them out. I mean, we got quite a hole here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, that's probably about an eight foot diameter hole. That's a um, pretty good size hole. And then this all came out as one piece. And that is, what is that? Six trees all came out together. I mean, so, man, this is strong smelling stuff. These roots smell like root beer, really strong. I mean, everything around here smells like root beer because these are sassafras trees. But um, we sure made a mess, didn't we? We got a bunch of dirt piled up here and a bunch of little trees, tree trunks and stuff that we'll have to end up picking up. But at least we got these out of the ground tonight. There's still a bunch more to do. So over here is another stump that a bunch of trees were growing out of and it is like six inches off of this fence line that goes down this way. So that one, you're gonna have to be really careful not to accidentally get into the fence trying to dig that out. So there's still quite a bit more to do here and a lot of cleanup to do, but I think that's gonna be it for tonight in this area. And uh, I'll have to pick up some more diesel. The tractor's almost out of diesel. We'll have to pick up some more fuel and we'll come back another night and we'll work on this some more. So one more thing to mention, while I was digging this, you could see the tractor move around quite a bit. Every time I would dig and I would get a hard spot, it would just pull the tractor backwards. And I had the brake set. Of course, the rear tires were pretty much off the ground, so that did nothing. And then I had the, the bucket down, trying to get a little bit of friction with the bucket. And it would still pull forward. And then it hit me. It hit me exactly what I see other people do sometimes. And I don't think anybody's ever really pointed it out or at least what I can remember. But I turned the bucket so it was facing down. So I got the bucket, instead of sitting on the bottom of the bucket, it's actually facing down so that the, the cutting tooth is right there. So it's, it's pushing against the ground. And now since it's digging in, it doesn't wanna go backwards and it doesn't wanna go forwards. It's kinda helped lock it in. And then the tractor didn't move on me anymore after that. And I had seen lots of guys digging with backhoes before doing that. And I guess I never really thought too much about it, but it does give you a lot more stability rather than just taking your bucket and pressing it flat down on the ground and lifting the front tires up. That's what I did. I had lifted the front tires off the ground so it was pressing down with the flat part of the bucket, but still that's nice and smooth and the backhoe and the whole tractor would move and cupping the, the bucket, facing it down like that just worked a lot better. I'm definitely gonna do that every time in the future. Well, I just looked when I turned the tractor off, I got just over 40 hours on it so far. So I've definitely been using it quite a bit. Well, the sun is getting pretty low on the horizon. It's normally about the time where I water the garden. So let's head out here to the pond pump, see if we can get it going. You see both sprinklers are going. I'll let this run until about dark. 
I'm gonna head back up to the barn and we'll check the turkeys one more time just to make sure they're doing okay. Check the orchard, you can see we've got, those are Asian pears on that tree. That's a sweet cherry, it's done and over with. And then this is a Liberty apple tree, supposed to be blight resistant. And it's got apples all through it, all the way, all the way around. This has got a ton of apples on this tree. See, here's what it looks like on the other side. Look at these limbs are dangling down so much from the apples that are hanging, weighing it down. Seems like it's been a long day today. I'll tell you what, I hadn't taken a road trip, you know, to a big box store, you know, home improvement store for a long time. It's probably about two months, I think. I've been trying to get everything local and minimizing how much I, I have to leave and, you know, go somewhere on a road trip. So, definitely made it seem like a long day today. Just kind of wasted. It almost seems like it's just wasted. We got one that's not doing good. See that? It's on its side, not on its stomach. I'm gonna have to give it some water, see if I can rehydrate it. All right, I gave him some water, made him drink a little bit. He's standing up. Anytime they get on their side like that, it is normally not a good sign. That is not how they sleep. They normally sleep sitting, kind of sitting up. So turkeys are pretty fragile these first few days and it's not uncommon to lose several in the first couple days but I find I haven't been watching it close enough today but if you watch it really close and come back out every hour if you see any of them that look like they're getting down sideways like that you can kind of hold them in the water a little bit their beak in the water and let them sit there and drink for a little bit and kind of rehydrate themselves and just keep coming back and if they're on their side again just keep doing it and I've had decent success having them not die. I'm, I like to say decent success, but I mean, they're, they're turkeys. I mean, you're gonna have some die, that's just the way it is. So we'll be back out here in about a half an hour to do the evening chores. All the animals, see the steers back there, all the animals are already lining up, ready for some food. Because Rebecca, she likes to feed her animals every night. Makes them friendly, makes them where she can touch them and handle them. Uh, of course, the steers. They're gonna get feed just so we can make them fat so but anyway i think that's gonna be it for this video um just kind of a daily vlog of what i'm doing we got turkeys 21 turkeys that is a crazy amount rebecca wanted to order 20 and um she wanted to make sure everybody in the family had a couple turkeys for the holidays and we've never raised that many i think before we raised the most was like seven or eight seven or eight turkeys in a chicken tractor and we moved them around that way and um i think it was seven but you wouldn't have done wanted to do much more than that in one of them chicken tractors and i don't know how we're going to do the 20 or 21 depending on how many survive we're gonna have to do something totally different with turkeys we may have to get them out here on pasture with the electric netting around them and then build one of those, what do they call it? They call it like a turkey arch or something like that. It's like a place for them to roost in the middle and give them a place to be out on pasture instead of in a tractor. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what we end up doing. They'll be in the brooder for the next, probably at least five weeks or more. But I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.